I'm in London for some Alexander Technique stuff with Peter Nobes, and I wanted to make a short video about my experience with that. For context, Alexander Technique is often known as a kind of postural thing, but uh, Peter's approach to it and uh, my friend Michael Ashcroft's approach to it are much more based on expanding awareness. For instance, right now I can hear a plane <laughs> going overhead and I'm noticing the sound of the plane and I'm noticing the sounds at various distances and the sense of space, the sense of the buildings on the horizon and, and even what's through the buildings that I can't see. And that expanding my sense not only of awareness but of uh, availability into that space creates a different kind of fluidity in my being. And so I've been playing with that. I did a weekend thing and then I just did a session with Peter right now. And it is remarkably subtle and kind of infuriating to my left hemisphere that wants to be able to have it all figured out and be able to uh, understand it, like wants to know it in the way that it knows things. And it's sort of the very essence of not that. And so there's no one way to point at what the technique is. There are various ways that may work in different moments and different situations for different people. And so it's kind of koan-like in that way. And I'm also really unsure how many different things there are. Like sometimes it feels like it's all one thing. Um, and broadly describing that thing as shifting from the left hemisphere being dominant to the right hemisphere feels like a pretty good way to describe it. Uh, but there's definitely multiple dimensions to it. Um, the sense of possibility of movement is one thing. The sense of expanded space is another. The sense of not knowing is perhaps a third. Although they're related because part of the possibility of movement comes from not fixating on the idea that I do know what I'm doing or what sort of move I'm about to make or anything like that. Today we were practicing, practicing, we were uh, exploring speech and what it feels like to talk. And while we were doing that, we were throwing a ball back and forth and noticing the difference between the ball, a feeling of the ball kind of throwing itself with, uh, with, with some attention, but not any trying, not any attempting, not any um, controlling of the ball's movement sort of with, with the mind, with the consciousness or something, and, and kind of contrasting that, and then exploring what it felt like to talk from that place, from a place of not knowing what we're about to say, and allowing the words to come out. And somehow this needs to, of course, also be able to get somewhere, you know, but likewise the ball can get to the other person's hand when you're playing catch and so there's a need to keep in mind what it is that I want to say what my intent is um, and then let go of the how and kind of let the how unfold itself which I'm also doing in this video I knew I, knew I wanted to make some sort of video about the Alexander technique stuff I didn't know particularly what a lot of it feels very related to my app, which is called Intend, which is sort of looks like to-do list software, but it's very much based not in kind of planning everything out and having, you know, giant lists to organize stuff, but based on kind of the sense that right now in this moment, I can do whatever I want and I need to somehow, I inevitably will somehow do something and that there can be value in kind of attending both to that freedom and also to what it is that I want. And now I notice when I go to say some of this, some of it, I, I seem to be going to find it as if it's over there somewhere. And that's related to what the AT folks sometimes call going thinky. Um, I haven't done it again. So the thing is that the, the baffling thing is that it is entirely possible to think and to express and to be even quite intellectual and so on while maintaining presence. It's not, they're not somehow 
separate. Although from a habit perspective, it can be uh, disarming and unfamiliar and a bit bewildering. But it's all right here. All of my memories that I could possibly want to share with you are here in this moment with me. They're not somewhere else. And that virtual somewhere else space, or, or put another way, that virtual somewhere else space is accessible from here, like from my being in the present, in this moment of these words that I'm saying, recording this video, talking to you, if you will, although of course you are watching and listening to it in a different present. That even the idea that I could kind of go somewhere else to acquire my memory or my, what I want to say is actually kind of illusory. It's sort of pretending that I'm momentarily not here, but of course, just because I go away, like you can still see me, I'm right here, you know, my eyes go up into the side and then I'm gone, but here I am, you know, the video, the video proves it. Oh. Yeah. So deep mysteries, deep mysteries. It is abundantly clear to me that attempting to, oh, hang on, there's a siren. So that was funny. The siren is gone enough now and I noticed for the first part of the pause, I was attempting to maintain where I was in the sentence for however long so that I could finish the sentence the moment after the pause happened. And when I got to the end, I felt like I could still kind of do that, but I sort of let go of, of attempting to do that. Um, in part because it would have felt like a bit of a weird disjointed energy anyway. Um, and uh, I thought I could just begin the sentence again. Um, one of the hazards, of course, of doing one take videos uh, unedited uh, out in public is sometimes there are noises. Um, but for me at my current phase, it's either that or no videos at all. And um, so here we are. So it is very obvious to me that attempting to concretize this process, this technique, this shift, this uh, whatever it is, is not just difficult, but in some very important sense, literally impossible. And yet there's a there there. And so that's, well, it's what it is. Um, it's very cool. Um, today we were also doing, um, the two things I wanted to look at were uh, uh, talking and walking. And we did both. And when we were walking around outside, it was, it was very vivid. Like the, the world got more vivid and kind of magical as I was walking through it. And I looked down at my feet at one point, Peter direct me, directed me to look down at my feet. And I was like, ah, just like the ball, they're, they're doing themselves. And I've kind of lost a little bit of that quality now, just even an hour later. Um, but I can kind of see if I can get it back here. So I'm just walking. I'm kind of letting my eyes lead me around. Um, I'm walking to what interests me, not kind of, um, I don't know how to describe the alternative. And yeah, I feel a bit more of a sense of my, my feet doing themselves. Still not as much as I had before, but some. Oh. Yeah, it feels like I have th th this thing, this the, the essence of this magic feels like falling into the mystery again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And in that way, it's very spiritual and sacred. It's, uh, it's falling in love with the mystery again and again and again and recognizing that the mystery was there the whole time and that also so was I. And that I can be available to respond without entering into a mode that, that narrows me. 
I just had the notion that I would stop at 10 minutes, but 10 minutes didn't quite feel like the stopping point when it arrived. Um, and so here I, here we are. Um, yeah, I have the sense that engaging with this practice will affect my business, will affect the design of the Intend app and um, whatever else I might get up to there. There's definitely something about what they talk about is, um, well, actually Michael Ashcroft says he got this from Jake Orthwine, which is the term of unfixating. Um, Alexander Technique, uh, Alexander himself used the phrase inhibition to refer to simply inserting a pause before doing something, not stopping it, but simply inserting a pause. And I've noticed that feel really valuable for myself. It's like, oh, I'm about to like pop open, you know, some sort of messaging app to check it or whatever. And it's like, wait a minute, I could, I could, but I also could not. And just really allowing that pause to be there. And another siren, geez. Yeah, a lot of what I want to do is kind of guide people into that place of being in this poised precipice where everything, everything feels possible, available, move towardable, allowable, all of that. And I don't know what can be done with, with an app in terms of that, but that's, that it feels like, feels like the thing that Intend wants to become. And, um, and already is to some extent, but it, it's sort of like, I need to polish off more of the, the crust on it, more of the, the shell. Yeah. Anyway, um, I will put some links down below, uh, to that app if you'd like to try it and let me know what you think. And also to, um, some of Michael Ashcroft's videos, as well as, uh, an interview of Peter by my friend Tashin. And, um, yeah, just thought I'd put my, my voice and my face and my walking around, um, out there in, into the world of people exploring this whole thing. And, uh, yeah, oh, I'll probably have more thoughts, but these will be the freshest or will they? Present moments are weird, man.